Hello, listeners. Jordan here. I just want to let you know that you can listen to Nighttime early and ad-free on Amazon Music. Include it with Prime. Hello, listeners. The episode you're about to hear was originally recorded and released in July of 2022. At that time, the subject of this episode, then 16-year-old Devin Marsman, had been missing just over six months. With the second anniversary of his disappearance occurring just next week, I'm re-releasing this original episode both to represent the state of the case as it was during the early months of the search, and also to get new listeners caught up, as in the coming days, I'm going to be releasing a follow-up episode that will continue this conversation and bring it to the present day. So with that said, let's go back in time to July of 2022. You are listening to the Nighttime Podcast. Hello, listeners. The story you're about to hear is one that quite literally hits close to home for me. In fact, I only need to walk a few blocks in either direction from my front door to see a poster pleading for information related to the disappearance of then 16-year-old Devin Marsman. Devin was last seen in late February of 2022, and since then, there's been very little in the way of new details, tips, or sightings. The one significant thing that the search for Devin has revealed is that he seemed to have maintained two separate and distinct groups of personal relationships. One that his parents knew about, and a group that they didn't. And as you probably can guess, it's the latter group that Devin was with in the days leading up to his disappearance, and their ever-evolving stories have done nothing but obscure the trail that Devin left behind. Tonight, we're going to hear from the person leading the charge along whatever trail there is. In this episode of Nighttime, I'm going to be joined by Teresa Gray, Devin's mom, to discuss the still unexplained disappearance of her 16-year-old son. A community held a candlelight vigil tonight to mark 100 days since the teenage boy disappeared. They packed into a basketball court in Halifax to pray and call for the safe return of 16-year-old Devin Sinclair Marsman. The teen was last seen by family in Spryfield 100 days ago. Police say they do not have any evidence of foul play, but not knowing where Marsman is has been agonizing for his friends and family. So just to start, Teresa, introduce yourself. How would you describe yourself at this point in your life? How would I describe myself? Mm -hmm. I would describe myself very distraught. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. I need answers and hopefully I can get some. Yeah, and it's been five months now it that this... It will be five months. Okay. Yeah. The last five months, um, I'm, I'm assuming is the reason you're so exhausted mm-hmm. and tired. Before we get into Devin and his story, just tell me a little <clears> bit about <throat> how your life changed over the last five months. What's uh, Other than missing your son, what is different now? Everything is different now. Like, um, I just go to work and I come home. I don't have the ambition to go anywhere or do anything. You know, I'm stressed out all the time. I have another daughter that's 18. When she leaves the house, I'm stressed out, you know, knowing like where she's going at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's really bad. Mm-hmm. Like, it's really bad. Well, let's go back in time about 16 years ago. So mm-hmm. tell me about Devin when he was born, what your life was like then, what kind of family he came into. Devin came into a great family. He. Um, you know, came in at a beautiful eight pound one baby boy. He was happy and go lucky. He, um, yeah, he was always polite and considerate. Um, super polite, actually, you know. I never had a problem with him mm-hmm. whatsoever. He never gave me no grief. And then, you know, I guess he just started hanging out with people that I didn't know he was hanging out with. Mm-hmm. And so, where did it where where did he grow up were, were you always in Halifax yeah so we grew up he grew up on McAlpine Avenue okay which I guess you would consider like, off of Bears Road the west, west, the west end. end of Halifax yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and growing up like what what was he into like what, what are, would you say as Devin's hobbies or what occupied his time being? Devin occupied his time with he loved to watch movies and whatever movie he watched he thought I should watch also <laughs> So he'd finish a series and then he'd come down and he put the series on for me, whether I wanted to watch it or not. <laughs> but it always seemed that it was a good series. Mm-hmm. He liked to play his video games. He, yeah, play basketball outside with his friends. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what was your relationship like with Devin? Mine and Devin's relationship, honestly, is 
like super, super close. Devin never left my house without telling me he loved me. Mm -hmm. You know, I could lay on the couch and he'd bring me a blanket. He's like, mom, I think you're cold. I'm like, no, I'm not cold. He'd bring me a blanket, like always asked me if I needed something or wanted something, mm -hmm. like very caring, like super caring. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think like with my kids, I always try to make it so that if they have a problem, they're going to be comfortable talking to me about it, not kind of hiding from me. Like, if, if do you think if, if Devin had like personal issues going on in his life, was your relationship the way that he'd be comfortable being like, mom, you know, this is going on? Most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. I mean, I did everything with Devin and my other kids also. I mean, I never even took them to a playground that I'd sit there and say, okay, you guys can play down the end of the playground. If they went to the end of the playground, I went to the end of the playground. Yeah. I never took family vacations without taking him, mm -hmm. like, or taking both of them. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, like I used to tell them, you know, there's no golden spoons. You guys get what I get because I work. And I made sure that, you know, they always had mm -hmm. everything that I could give them. And it's uh, in your family would be Devin plus one older sibling? No, I have two. I have a son that's 37. Okay. And then I have a daughter that's 18. Okay. So I'm, I'm assuming Devin and your daughter that was 18, or that's 18 close. would be very close. Super close. Mm -hmm. How's she dealing with all this? Uh, she's pretty stressed out. She's been getting like lots of headaches. You know, she's a little bit more quiet than she used to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and, and you describe Devin, and everything I've read about him describes him as being very, like, polite and kind of like a gentle guy. Like with, That's the thing. I mean, honestly, like, I don't know. Like, this is just not his character. There's no way that he would, like, run away from home. Mm -hmm. He had no reason to run away from home. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I never, honestly, ever had an issue with Devin. Always very kind and polite you know, mannerly, and everybody that knew him, whether it was a child or whether it was an adult or a teacher, mm -hmm. they could tell you the same thing. Yeah. You know, he's honestly is a really, really good kid. Mm -hmm. And so at 16, uh, forgive my ignorance, he'd be in grade 11? 11. Okay. It, was he working or anything at that point? No, he wasn't working. Which is an unusual for... He was like struggling with school. He um, got um, diagnosed in grade 9 with dyslexia. Okay. You know, too proud to ask for help. You know, I offered like to get him tutors. He didn't want to get tutors. Mm -hmm. So he would go to school, but he wasn't, he was going to school, but not participating in the class, doing yeah. the work. And, you know, they just said, you know, if you're not going to participate in the work, then they're going to have to find a different avenue, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So after Christmas, he didn't return to school. Okay. So in, okay. So about two months, three months prior. Right. Okay. How was... That's a big decision for a grade 11 to come out of school. What, how did he deal with that? Did he seem like bothered by it or stressed by it? No, he was, he was, I think, pretty stressed out because even as Christmas came and Christmas went and he's like, Mom, just call the school, tell them, like, I'll do everything. Like, I'll pull my socks up, like, you know, I'll do the work. Mm. And it's not that he couldn't do the work. It was like, you know, honestly, like, I got called from, like, the science teacher that he just blew signs out of the water. Mm -hmm. But he just needed to be shown what to do, mm -hmm. and he just didn't want to raise his hand and ask for that help. Yeah. Which so, is sad. Uh, what I'm getting from it then, it wasn't so much like a behavioral thing. No, it, not at all. He was just struggling. And not it, at all. And I guess school, it's not for everybody. Like your no. your, your typical schooling, I guess, isn't no, for everyone. No, it, so. it really isn't. No. No, I get that. Well, let's talk about the, the events leading up to his <clears throat> disappearance. So you, you had said earlier... Um, you guess he got kind of maybe involved with some people that you didn't know as well as this? I think Devin had two groups of friends. Mm -hmm. I think he had the group of friends that I knew about and the group of friends I had no idea about. The the group of friends that you knew about, mm -hmm. these, did he have like kind of like lifelong friends that would be comfortable coming in your house? And Oh, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It, yes. Those like for the most part good kids, like what would they... Well, they seem to be good kids. I mean, mm -hmm. you'd only see them like coming and going, but I never heard anything bad about them. Yeah. You okay. know, I don't think they've been in trouble. And you weren't, you wouldn't be concerned normally about... No. Yeah. No. In this group, this other group of friends that maybe you didn't know about, do you know mm -hmm. what how Devin was connected to them? Like, is it people he met online or, or God knows? No, so one, the 23-year-old that he was hanging out with is actually a cousin that I had no idea he hung out with this cousin, but he's, this cousin is bad news. Uh, he's into a lot of bad things. Okay, would this be a cousin on your side or your? No, it's his father's brother's grandson. Okay, okay. Yeah. all right. So if I would have only known that he was, you know, like being around him whatsoever. Uh -huh. Maybe I could have, you know, directed him in a different direction. Yeah. But you always find out the things after the fact. Exactly. You know, yeah. so. And yeah. a 23-year-old 
with 16 year old Devin, the tw- uh, Devin would be a little impressionable because this is an older guy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that would certainly be something you'd want to know about. So this other group of friends, did it seem to be kind of people connected with his cousin, yes, you expect? definitely. Okay. Definitely. Do you know if this was something that would have been going on for some time that he'd been with them? Or do you know the history of these relationships at all? You know, it's funny. I did know the history, but, you know, then I heard, you know, yesterday that one of my clients said, oh, um, a girl's father or grandfather had saw Devin in the car with this boy and another girl. And this was probably like a year ago. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I thought it was just like a new thing, but I don't think it was a new thing. Okay. Um, so now we know now that Devin is out of school at this point, Mm -hmm. at least temporarily with two groups of friends, one that you're more comfortable with and one that you weren't aware of and you're uncomfortable with. Now talk me through his actual disappearance or what is known about his last known days, which are the end of February, 2022. Right. So the only thing that I do know, so that Wednesday, which would have been the 23rd, Mm -hmm. um, I seen him that day, obviously, because I don't work that day. Thursday morning, he was still asleep. When I went to work, I usually work from 11 to 7. And this is at your house? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> I found out the next day that he and this cousin and another 16-year-old were actually at this boy's house in Clayton Park. Mm-hmm. Another boy. And they left that boy's house and they went back to the cousin's house. And that's the last anybody's seen of him. Okay, and it's often been said he was last seen in Spryfield. I'm guessing that is the cousin's house? You're correct. Okay, so at some point, I guess after you, just so I get the timeline right, so Wednesday he's home, Thursday morning he's asleep as you leave. Right. So you believe it was Thursday that he ends up with the cousin at the house in Clayton Park? That's right. Right. And then then they went back to his house in Spryfield. Yeah. And nobody's seen him since. But Devin doesn't drive. Mm -hmm. So I know for sure he was at that house. In Clayton Park and in Spryfield? Right, 100%. Mm -hmm. But the one on Friday at the Cousins, I know for sure he was there. Mm -hmm. So where did he go? Mm -hmm. So starting with the house in Clayton Park, I'm I'm assuming that this house is someone connected to Devin's cousin. Right. Do you know what they would have been doing or why he was there? Is there anything you know about it? I don't know if they were just hanging out there or what they were there doing, mm. but I think it's pretty sketchy. Okay, but you, but is there any doubt? Like, you do know he was there and you're pretty confident? I do because I know they were there on the Thursday because the boy whose apartment it is, his brother had said that they were there Thursday okay. night. Yeah. So I know for certain they were there Thursday night. Okay, and the cousin was there with them? I'm right. It, so the cousin... Another 16-year-old and Devin came to this apartment. Okay. The three of them left together, mm-hmm. and then I guess they went to Spryfield. Okay. When a 16-year-old goes missing, it doesn't seem like it would be the kind of situation where the cousin could be just like, so I haven't seen him. He was here last night. He's gone. Do you, do you know how, like, the, certainly some, like, an investigator or someone questioned the cousin. Do you have any idea of how he responded or how he explained Devin was here and now he's gone? I just know, honestly, this cousin has told four different stories. And if you're not lying, Mm -hmm. you're not telling four different stories. Are you able to share some of the stories or what kind of the different, maybe the evolution of his story? Yeah, so I know the first story was they went to the house in Clayton Park after they left there. His initial, first his initial story was he wasn't with Devin at all. Okay. So then the next story was he was, they were at Clayton Park, Mm -hmm. but he said when they left there at first, they all went their own way. Mm -hmm. Then he changed it up again. And he said that they left there. They went back to his house in Spryfield. Mm -hmm. They went to sleep. He woke up and Devin was gone. Mm -hmm. Then another story is they went back to his house. They played video games. They wrestled went to a neighbor's a few doors down and then I'm not sure what happened after that but he doesn't even have a neighbor on his street it's a brand new subdivision like he doesn't have a friend on his really? street that okay. they would have been down there mm-hmm. so none of the stories make sense mm-hmm. whatsoever and then there was another story that there's no way you know he wasn't with Devin because he wasn't home that day <laughs> yeah okay right
so the, the way the timeline worked that you told me is um, he was home Wednesday. He was there when you left Thursday. Sh- sometime in the day or two after that is when he's last seen likely in Spryfield at his cousin's house. Right. At what point did you become concerned, like, you know, well, where is Devin? Yeah, well, after a few days, because there's been times, like, he'd stay out, could be three nights. Maybe the odd time he stayed out four, but other than that, you know, no more than four nights. So when we're approaching the fourth night, I said to his father, I need to call and, like, report him missing because this is just not like him. Mm-hmm. I like to stay out more nights than that. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because even when he would stay out and I'd say, you know, like, Devin, like, where are you? Or, you know, you need to answer your phone. He'd come home and say, well, Mom, I'm allowed to stay at my friend's house. He's mm-hmm. like, it's okay. But honestly, now I know those friends, that's not where he was staying at. So there was more going he on. He was actually staying at that cousin's house. Okay, yeah. and you think that's been, so? Obviously, that's been going on longer. And he, I wonder if he knew that it was something he wouldn't approve of, and that's why he was hiding it. Definitely, hundred percent. I never would have approved Devin even remotely hanging with his cousin. Mm. You know, he just always kept telling me he's just at a friend's house. You know, over by Spryfield Mall. Okay, keep it. I vague. had no reason, you know, that I wouldn't think right. Yeah, uh, it. When he would uh, normally, let's say, two or three days go by and you haven't heard from him, w- would he be calling and checking in or would it just be yeah. he'd just show up at the door one day? No, or he would, like, come in throughout the day and yeah. then, you know, like, go back out, right, and then stay out. And then I would send him, like, tax or call him and then he wouldn't answer or he'd call me and say, Mom, I'm just at my friend's. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, this situation in particular, when a couple days go by and you get concerned, is... Was your first step to go to police, or were there other places where you're trying to find him? Like, tell me a bit about trying, uh, like, initially no, my, what you did. F- my first thing was basically like to call the police because after three days, I'm like, it's just not him. He doesn't stay out that long, mm-hmm. right? Okay. So then I called. And uh, I'm assuming a 16 year old who hadn't been seen three or four days, police probably would take that seriously pretty quick. Like, what was the ex- your experience like with their their response? Well, I mean, they seem to, you know, take it seriously. But, like, there wasn't too much. You know, they did a couple, like, media releases. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I think they only did, like, one or two. I mean, 16, it should be all over the news, right? Certainly. You know? It shouldn't have... You go ahead. It shouldn't have to be me, like, going from one end of the province to another end of the province, right? Certainly. But I'm definitely happy with the help that I'm getting now from the detective division that's on his case now. They seem to be, you know doing much more and checking into more things and, you know, getting more people into question them. They did not have no sleep morning, noon, and night until they come yeah. forth. The past three months have been a nightmare for Teresa Gray. I'm grateful that they came out to help me search for him because he needs to be searched for, but it's overwhelming. 16-year-old Devin Sinclair Marsman was last seen in Spryfield on February 25th. He was reported missing to police on March 4th, who've stated there is no suggestion of foul play. Gray says the information she has is that Devin was last seen with one of his cousins and another youth. Gray says Halifax Regional Police have assured her the search for her son is a priority, but she believes the people he was last seen with know more than they're sharing. They are telling police they don't know nothing at all. But how can you disappear from somebody's house and they not know where you're at? He's a 16-year-old child and his family wants him back desperately. Family friends organized a community search in Spryfield to bring comfort to Gray and increased awareness to Devin's disappearance. We just want to bring awareness to everybody all across Nova Scotia and Canada. If you have any information about Devin, please, please reach out. Reach out to someone. Gray says she just wants Devin to come home, no questions asked. I guess the, it's safe to say that Devin's last known day or two, it's its quite confusing and I guess a matter of speculation for the most part where there's differing stories and I guess it's hard to really nail down exactly where and who he was with at this point. But what about like any trail that he left behind? Like, um, like a 16 year old typically would be pretty active on social media, have a bank account. Is there anything? There's nothing. His bank account has not been used. His social media has not been used. Like there's nothing whatsoever. Like there's no, nothing on his cell phone. He did have a cell phone, but it wasn't working. Okay. But we do know that he downloaded a VPN on an iPod, which that's what he used 
you know, for making phone calls. Okay. But that hasn't been pinged since the 25th. Okay. Of February. Was he very active on social media? Like, I'm just think, I'm thinking a lot of 16-year-olds are on there all the time. Was it, would he be an, a heavy user? No, you know what? Honestly, Devin's big thing, Devin's big thing was watching movies and series. Yeah. Like, he'd stay up all night long watching TV. Yeah. Or, you know, like, the odd time playing video games. And, you know, it's so strange because there were days and nights that Devin didn't even go out of my house. Mm. So, this is just, like, crazy because... Yeah, there were so many days that he just didn't go out. He'd stay up all night watching movies, and then he'd sleep all day, and then that routine, you know, redo it again for the next day. Yeah. And now with, um, in a story like this, especially where, you know, five months or so, or nearly five months have passed, generally there's going to be moments where it looks like things are happening. Has there, and maybe you're getting closer to an answer, has there been any developments? You know what? There's no developments. Like, there's nothing. It's almost like he just vanished off the face of the earth. I don't even know. Like, we just put up, like, a $10,000 reward. We're not getting no bites on that, neither. It's almost like, you know, and then you hear people say, you know, they don't want to talk or say anything because of drug dealers. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if that's the case, you know, is that is that's what's keeping them quiet? Mm -hmm. I have no idea, but something's keeping them quiet. This $10,000 reward, is that something, like, a private person put up, or is this, like, through the police or something? Five thousand dollars we raised on um the on a GoFundMe, uh -huh. and then Devin's uncle, he put it up to ten thousand. Okay. Yeah. But ten thousand, like if you're talking about sixteen to twenty three year olds that are all in and around this, uh, that's enough money to open people's lips. You would think. I'm hoping, like you know, I want somebody to open their lips, you know, just oh, to yeah. give me a clue. Yeah. You know, like they don't even have to tell me. You know, I wouldn't even look over my shoulder. Just give me a clue where I can find them. Like, mm. you know, like I just need that clue. Like, I just, I don't know. Every every avenue that I could go, I've been. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been a point where there's like any kind of like a sighting or something that you thought had any credibility? I'm sure you get messages often with, I think I saw them, you know. Well, it's funny that you say that because... Um, Lisa from Wings of Mercy sent me a message today said somebody they're not sure when it was saw my Boston pizza <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not sure that was him at Boston pizza yeah other people said they thought they seen him and bears like panhandling Devin wouldn't have a need to panhandle that wouldn't make sense yeah. no and be that close from home like no that that wouldn't be so I just think you know people see people maybe resemble Devin mm -hmm. but other than that there's no sightings yeah and it's um you say his bank account hasn't been touched is there money in his bank account do you know yeah i know i'm not sure how much is there there's not a large amount but i know his sister like after devin went missing she's like i just want to put a couple dollars in there i don't even know if it was like 50 or 60 dollars i'm not sure exactly how much but she's like just in case like mm -hmm. you know what i mean just in case Makes he needs sense. something right yeah. because she wanted to put more and you know like the detectives are like you shouldn't put like large man in there mm -hmm. right just put a couple dollars just you know just in case yeah but no nothing's been lost. one thing about Devin's story just to, myself following it on Facebook and whatnot I know you have a lot of supporters can you can you talk a little bit about how you've been able to kind of gather advocates to help you with this well it's funny at first I thought I was doing everything on my own and then Sarah Plowman mm -hmm. from I think, global yeah I think so well she did my um she did one of my news stories and she asked me if I wanted help and I said I need help and she said I should message this lady from Wings of Mercy she said but she will only reach out to me if I reach out to her okay right so I added her on Facebook and I sent her a private message or and then I just said hello and she's like do you want our help and I'm like I need your help mm -hmm. and she's just been like my saving grace because without her I don't even know like She's just, yeah. yeah, she's great. And Wings of Mercy, that's like a volunteer organization to help people like in your right. position. Right. What kind of things would they be helping you with? Like, what do they do? Well, they had a vigil for Devin when he was missing for like 100 days. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just going through different things and trying to find, you know, different ways of getting people to like, you know, like different stories, like to see if, you know, people have seen him, mm -hmm. like following up on if they've seen him. Yeah. Or just things in that general aspect yeah. I think. okay yeah. just get, keeping awareness yeah. out there and helping follow yeah like they created a site like about Devin you know getting people from here all across the country like you know to share his poster put his posters up his flyers mm -hmm. 
you know, just getting people to let people know, you it, know. And with his posters, I see them all over the city, but I understand it goes a lot further than that. How far have you been able to spread the search for Devin? Well, I myself, I've been everywhere. So, like, when I first started, like, I went, like, to Picto, you know, because I heard rumors, different things in Picto. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Yarmouth and Digby and Shelburne. I've been to Bridgewater. I went to Fredericton and Moncton. I've been to Cape Breton because somebody, you know, thought they seen a sighting of a boy walking with a backpack on a highway that kind of resembled Devon. Yeah. So in the car we went and we went to put posters up in Cape Breton. And I mean, just like local, like up and down streets and mm. post and stores and... You know, I mean, people in my area are driving around with Devin's photos, like on their back windows of their car and, you know, making like bumper stickers and putting it on their car. I mean, from one extreme to another, like mm -hmm. something got to give. Yeah. In in talking to you, I get the impression that you have no belief that he simply ran away and took off. Like you don't see that as an option at there all. There is no way possible. Devin, honestly, comes from a really, really good home. He has done more than most kids, 16 years old. I mean, he's traveled everywhere. And we just have that relationship. Like, he never left my house without telling me he loved me. So for Devin to run away, no Devin way. would not run away. And this is definitely out of Devin's control. Yeah. What do you, like, if you had to say, like, what, like in your heart of hearts, what do you think is going on? Honestly, I think, for me, there's only two options. I feel maybe somebody's holding him against his will or they could be like drugging him and trafficking him or something has happened and somebody's covering it up mm -hmm. because I mean how does a 16 year old just vanish mm -hmm. without a trace mm -hmm. so yeah it just makes no sense mm -hmm. so for people who are hearing your story and want to either learn more or get involved and try to help you what's the best thing that they can do just create awareness, like just download his photos, like download his posters, like wherever you live, like even like if you live, like I was saying on different other posts, like if you live close to hotels or motels, like just take them, like take them wherever like you can take them, like, mm -hmm. you know, put them on your street corners, like wherever you can put a poster, download it and put up a poster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you gave um, a few different options there of what you think may have happened mm -hmm. do you feel like this is going to have a positive outcome or a good outcome or, or how do you feel at this point in terms of hope um i wanted to have a positive outlook because honestly i don't know what will happen to me if it's not positive like sorry Never in my life did I ever imagine that I'd be looking for one of my children. My kids are my everything, like my everything and I just need a clue. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for joining Teresa and I for a discussion surrounding the disappearance of her son, Devin Marsman. If anyone listening has any information relating to Devin's disappearance, please contact the Halifax Police or Crime Stoppers. I've added their contact information in this episode's description. Additionally, if anyone close to Devin or this case would be interested in speaking to me, I'd very much like to hear from you. You can find me at nighttimepodcast.com. Now, as we heard Teresa say during the interview, she needs all the help she can. So if you want to learn more or assist in advocating for Devin, Teresa invites you to join the Facebook group dedicated to the discussion surrounding the case. That too is linked in this episode's description. Now, with all that said, I'm going to start wrapping up this episode, but before I do, let me give some thanks. First, a big thanks to Teresa for spending some time with me and with you, the listeners of Nighttime. I'd like to also thank Monty Data, who contributes the music for this episode, and LJ from the Dystopian Simulation Podcast, who provides my intro and outro voiceovers. But then lastly, and most importantly, a massive thank you goes out to each and every one of you listening to Nighttime, as without your interest and your support, this show would be as pointless as it would be impossible. Now on the topic of support, I want to thank the newest subscribers to the premium feed. Kristen, Christina, Muriel, and Gordy, thank you for going premium. 
And for anyone else who'd like to support the show, but isn't currently subscribed to the premium feed, it costs only a couple dollars a month, and that money funds the creation of the show, but the premium feed also gives you the episodes two days early, gives them to you ad-free, and gives you access to a full back catalog of nighttime episodes. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can go premium right now at patreon.com slash nighttime podcast. I appreciate your support in this. Nighttime podcast. And even if you don't want to go premium, you can still support the show by sharing this episode on social media and letting all your like-minded friends know what we're doing here. If anyone has any story ideas, feedback, or if anyone out there has any story ideas, questions, comments, or feedback, you can contact the show at nighttimepodcast.com slash contact. We look forward to hearing from you. But until then, take care of each other, hug your loved ones tight, and let me know if you see anything weird. The Nighttime Podcast is written, hosted, and produced by Jordan Bonaparte. Whatever information you have upon Devin, share that information with his mother, his family, his dad, because, you know, like, a lot of people view ratting as a, as a bad thing. And, you know, we don't, you don't have to go to police. You can easily just go talk to his mother. You can go talk to his father. I just want to say that I appreciate, like, community like this coming together and, you know, helping to search for Devin. And I just want to say that I'm definitely going to find Devin, like, literally. And if I have to find him myself, then I'll find him myself. But, yeah, foremost, I just need to find Devin.